We'll get started. The first question is 9.1 117 slash 31. So you would write down 117 slash 31, slide number 31 in the book. I mean in the online. Okay, we covered this one I think last week, but we'll cover it again because I don't want, to, don't want y'all to feel confident. So we need to find the we need to find the distance, the arc distance of 180 degrees right here. I think it's 180, isn't it? Yeah. And then we need to transfer that distance to this cog. And remember, you need to draw you a big wheel around here so you can remember what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started. And I don't have my calculator up, so I'm going to depend on y'all for the calculations if y'all miss me up. So what is 180? 180 is pi. So if 180 is pi, 3 pi over 2, and pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, so 180 is pi, so we're going to take s, and we're going to equal pi times 4.26. Okay, somebody crank that out for me and give me to the hundredth. So the S of the big gear is equal to what is it be twelve something? What is it? Four times uh, four times one point four. Uh, it's gonna be somewhere around twelve point something. Thirteen point three what? Thirteen point three eight inches. That is the distance traveled by the big gear at 180 degrees. So we'll just mark it right, right here to here. When you get the pedal, or you can put the pedal right here if you want to. When that pedal gets to right there, you have traveled, you've moved that chain 13.38 inches. So that 13.38 inches that you traveled here can be put right here. And remember, it goes several. On this one, it'll go several. So 13.388, 13.38 inches is equal to R 1.58 times what? Theta. Divide by 1.5. Divide by 1.5. And that'll give us theta, the angle of the little, what you call it, gear, angle of the little gear is equal to, and somebody divide this, tell me what you get. 8.92 radians. So I'm going to divide that by what? Multiply that by 180 over what? So the angle that, that the little that the little gear turns is equal to somebody give me it and just give me to the hundreds. Oh, it's going to be degrees, isn't it? Or is it going to be pi? I hate this thing. It's going to be pi. It's going to be 180 over pi. So that means pi cancels. What is it? 180 over pi times 8.98. What do you get? Well, three will go into nine three times. It's going to be 480, 460, or 405, almost 500 degrees. What is it? 511. 511 point what? 12. 12. 12 uh, minutes? Okay, no, it's just decimals. Decimal. Now you've got the angle. So now I'm going to draw a, I'm going to move all this, which you probably won't let me move it because I haven't had any training on this thing. Okay, there we go. We're going to move that right there. And I'm going to erase 
this guy right here. And we're going to put a circle, a VA circle, Well, that's a little bit too big, isn't it? All right, there's our tire. Everybody with me? So we want to know how much distance is traveled by that tire. So S of the tire is equal to what is the radius of the tire? 14.7 inches times theta, which theta in this case is 13.38. But I thought we had, do we not have it in radians? 511 is degrees. So we need to write, am I wrong or is, or is theta 8.92? I'm, I'm confused here. That's okay. We need 8.92. So that would be times 8.92, would it not? Y'all help me out there. I'm getting confused. I think it's 8.92 because it's in radians. Because we changed it to what? Degrees. So that would be 8.92. All right. Somebody multiply that out and tell me what you get. The distance traveled by the tire is equal to what? 131. 131 point what? Is that what everybody got? I would assume that's inches. I'll check. Somebody verify that. Now, as long as we were in radians, which I think we were, which is 113 inches, that's 12 feet. Oh, I'm sorry, 11.8 feet. I don't know what it is. But what is, what is 131.12 divided by 12? 10. 10 point what? Okay, I said 11. I saw. So let's type it in. Let's see what they say. 131.1. Let's see if we got, I bet you a dollar it should have been 511. Let's see. 124. So somebody check to see what I did wrong. I don't know what I did wrong. Somebody check my math, please. Were you supposed to not switch it to degrees to calculate it? And well, just calculate it? I, I, I didn't switch it to degrees. I used 8.92. I just converted to degrees so I'd get some idea on how many times it went around. The 8.92 okay. is the radians. Might have rounded to What'd you I, say? Okay. Okay. What'd you say? Who said? Go ahead. Was that Oconee or Pendleton? Both, I think. Okay. Well, speak out. Just go ahead and speak. I had calculated. Oh, sorry. I calculated theta as 8.47 and had gotten 124.5 inches. Okay, now, where did you got 8.47? Yes, sir. Okay, where did I go wrong, y'all? Um, I got S as 13.38 and then I divided it by 1.58 as the radius of the smaller here. My bad. Y'all didn't say a word. See, it's y'all's fault. It's not my fault. I can't blame the Russians. I'll blame y'all. For some reason, I just... Why did I say 1.5? I'm sorry. It's supposed to be an 8 right here. And, of course, all y'all didn't say a word, so it's not my fault. It's y'all's fault. There. Now, what what did you get? 8 point what? 8.47. 8.47. So just change that to 8.47. The procedure is sound. I just decided to cut off eight hundredths of a foot. I, I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry about that. I guess y'all were wondering why I chopped off the eight. I, 
I don't know why. It's all of the alcohol I've been drinking this morning. Let's do another one. Why am I wanting to do another one? Because it may be a test question. Duh. Okay, let's not going to let me. Uh, change the answers. Okay, there you go. Try that one. I'll, I'll write it on the board for you if I can ever get this thing to erase. Okay. I'm just not hitting on all cylinders today. 13.1 inches. The tire is 13.1 inches. And this one is 1.95 inches. And this one is 4.44 inches. Okay, go ahead and take a minute and see if you can work it, and then we'll work it out. Hopefully, I won't drop a number off the numbers. I hope I won't do that again. Should have caught it. I don't know if I can catch it. Sorry. Everybody was supposed to say it after I found it. Everybody was supposed to say, Oh, yeah, I thought that was, I, I wondered why you did that. That's what everybody's supposed to say, but nobody says it. Settle down, Phil. Oh, I don't know what it is. Some of, isn't the moon supposed to be full this week or Friday? I think everybody's supposed to turn into werewolf. What, bleh, I can't even talk. I need to join. <laughs> Werewolves and vampires Friday, isn't it? So I asked my son did he wanted to go see a movie. He said, no, there ain't anything good at the movies. That's pretty sad when a seventh grader says that. <laughs> Fell out the marble reds. I know. Actually, I just Okay, here, try not to cut off numbers this time. S is equal to pi times 4.44. 4. And somebody give me that number to the hundredth, please. Okay, 9.5. 13.95 inches. Did everybody get 13.95 inches? Okay. So that travels 13.95 inches. So that means the chain travels 13.95, which means this one has to cover 13.95 inches. So we got to find theta because whatever it turns, this cycle, this uh, wheel turns. So 13.95 is equal to 1.95 times theta. And divide by 1.95, divide by 1.95, and you get theta is equal to, somebody crank that out. 7.15. 7.15 7 radians. Now you've got theta. Now we take the, the S of the big tire and we multiply the 7.15, which is theta. Multiply that by, please don't mess it up, Hubert, 13.1. And multiply those together and tell me what you get. 93.7. 93.7. That should be your answer. Unless I've messed it up. 93.7 inches. Yeah, and I also wanted to do it again so I could unconfuse those that I could when I just cut off a number. I know y'all don't do that, but sometimes I do. And we feel good about ourselves. So that's a good test question. I know we've I think that's about the fourth time we've done that question. Somebody look in your notes and verify. So you shouldn't be whining about that one. Okay. That was 117. That's 117. 117. 
117, 117, y'all see a pattern? Okay, 9.1, 27 slash 5. Okay, find the measures, supplementary angles with measures 11x minus 50 and 8x minus, okay, here's the key word, supplementary. Supplementary means what? This is a test question. 180, so we're going to set 180 is equal to, now remember, this is zero, this is 180. One angle is 8x minus 55. The other angle is 11x minus 50. Now, why did I put this one over here? Because it's a what? It's a little bit what? It's a little bit bigger, so that's why I put the 11x over here. 11 times 5 is 55. 8 times 5 is 40. This is the bigger angle. All right, so that's going to be plus these two. So that's going to be 11x minus 50 plus 8x minus 55. All right, finish it. Because most of the time, what's the most difficult part of the problem? Setting it up. So starting in the algebra, yes. All three of those answers are correct. Setting it up, starting it, or just the basic algebra. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I taught Math 140. I've taught Math 140 for... I don't know, five or six years. And the, yeah, since 2003. Yeah, 2003 is when, yeah, well, five or six years. And the number one problem with calculus is not the calculus. People can't do algebra one, algebra two, and algebra three. And that's why they can't do the algebra, because 10% of calculus is actual new material calculus. 90% of it, 80 to 90%. 80% is basic algebra, 90% or 10% added on to that is trig, and then the other 10% is calculus that you learned for the first time. So, distribute the 1, distribute 1, nothing changes. 180 is equal to 11x minus 50 plus 8x minus 55. 180 is equal to 11x plus 8x is 19x. Negative 50 minus 55 is negative what? 105. Bring the 105 across the river. It becomes positive 105. 19x is equal to, looks like 285. I can tell you right now, 19x, 19 will go into 28 twice, I mean once, so you're probably talking about 14 or what, I don't know, what's it? I'm sorry, what? 15. 15, sorry. 15 is equal to x. So what do you do with that? You would be surprised on how many students do that problem and they put 15 right here. Okay. What is that noise? Okay, I, that Pendleton microphone is like, it's, it's, if the setting is 1 to 10, that Pendleton microphone is like on 27. Okay, everything y'all do up there, I'm like, it's like an avalanche over here. Okay, all right, 15. You take that 15 and you plug it in. 8 times 15 minus 55 and 11 times 15 minus 50. So somebody do this. 8 times 15 is 120. 120 minus 55 is dang old 65. Thank you. So this one is 65 degrees. Therefore, and you don't have to, you just take that away from 180 and you get what, 115? Yeah. So this one is equal to 115. And there is your two answers. Let me just put it to you this way. If I gave 10 people a, a, a problem like that, I bet I'd get three or four to put 15 down as the answer. They just forget. They just forget to plug it back in. So that is a legitimate question. 
It's kind of like the question you write down 51 hundredths and you forget to what? You forget to reduce. That is the same thing. People just forget. So that's a legitimate question. And that's why, that's why, you know, that's why I'm teaching. That's why I'm reviewing. Because, you know, it's not like you know everything. We were having a discussion here at Pendleton and, and Oconee and Easley. The Anderson campus was having a discussion on people that are born with the ability that know that they know everything. Y'all ever met anybody like that? Easley, Pendleton, and Oconee? Yes. Yeah. I have I, I have a uh, person that I that's not in my family anymore that says that she created the first computer. <laughs> Uh, I've, of, I've often asked her if she was with Al Gore when he invented the internet. <laughs> People have no idea what I'm talking about, but Al Gore was our vice president under Clinton, and he said he invented the internet. <laughs> Must be nice to invent things like that. <laughs> Only thing I claim thing to is I did come up with Jason yes. versus. Jason versus Freddy. I did that before. It, that's my only claim to fame. That and being in Ron Rash's book. So the angle is 65. What do we do? Type comma, comma. And 115. Any of y'all ever read Ron Rash's books? Which one did you read? What? I can't remember if I'm a deputy or just, I can't remember what I am in that book. In one book, I beat up hippies. I'm a deputy and I beat up all the hippies. That's Saints at the River. And I'm always wearing sunglasses because I used to make fun of people wearing sunglasses inside. So he put me in there and uh, straight, um, the world made straight. He, he made fun of, he, he knew I'd get pissed off of this. He made me a former Marine that came back from came back from being and I and I raised pot because he knows I hate potheads and <laughs> I, and I have a peace symbol around my neck. <laughs> yeah, his his books were really interesting. Yeah, they are in Europe. They go crazy over really? his books. Yes, huh. he goes to Europe all the time and gets treated like a king. Over there. <laughs> this is something. All right, let's do something else. Have y'all seen the movie World Made Straight? It's funny when you hear your name in a movie. It's funny. Yeah. I'm going to have to look for that now. Yeah, it's funny. And in the movie, they make me an army. That's even worse. They make me an army veteran. That's even worse. Okay, let's do another. That's my that's my 15 minutes of fame. That's number five. Have we done one like this? Did. That's one we just did. Because they send, they send over and over, and I don't know if y'all are hitting the button five times or if y'all are sending them five times. Question seven, seven, seven. Okay, so let's do one seven, okay? I'm going to pick on Miss Billy. All right, so here is, okay, this is one of the ones we did at the beginning. You can do this on a calculator, but I'm going to tell you it's a whole lot faster to do it by hand. And I think we've already done one like this, but we'll do it again. 51.30 minus 16.40. Okay? Now, just like when you were in second or third grade, when you can't subtract, what do you do? Well, it depends on where you're from. It's B O R R Y or B O R R O W, depending on where you're from. I'm not going to say it, so because I don't need some smart ass telling me I said it wrong. So I'm just going to say B O R R Y or B O R R O W, and I'm going to do that, and that will make 51 turn into what? 50. And that 60 seconds will come over here. It's floating around up here. 60 minutes. And I'm going to add it to that 30 and make this 30 a what? A 90. 
Now I can <laughs> subtract. What is 90 minus 40? 50. And what is 50 minus 16? And you are done. And yes, that could be a test question. I usually do those test questions to give you a few points. 34.50 should be your answer. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'm going to delete those. I'm trying to do as many as I can, so y'all just bear with me. Delete, delete, delete. There we go. Number eight. Same thing, but this one, and this is a test question. Why would I put this one on before the last one? This one is one that's on a standardized test. If you were ever taking a standardized test, you know, with math on it, they might put this one on there. So go ahead and write it down. This one is 90. Well, first of all, you can't write it as 90. You've got to write it as 89, 59, 60, minus 67, 50, 40. Now, not a lot of people realize, and I think I went over this. I don't know if I did or not. But when you have minutes and seconds, you've got to turn the degrees into degrees, minutes, and seconds. If you just have minutes, then you have to turn the degrees into degrees and minutes. If you have minutes and seconds, you've got to turn it. So if I just had minutes, if I had 90 minus 67, 49, then I would change 90 to 89, 60. So I would change that into just minutes. So you've got to learn, you know, this one I change into minutes and seconds. So what's 40 minus, 60 minus 40? 20. 59 minus 50. And 89 minus 67? 22. I'm sorry, I messed up. That's supposed to be minutes. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just let me check that. Always get wrong. Oh! I'm sorry. I know y'all don't mean anything by it. It's just that that daggum microphone is so daggum sensitive. I need to turn it down, maybe. There we go. Okay, now what were you asking? 67. 50, 40, and you it. Oh, you're talking about decimal degrees. Yeah, you can do that. Just do it back. Yeah, you can do that, but just make sure you type in minutes because the directions are saying that. So on a challenge question, if you don't put it back in decimal, you know, I have to mark it wrong. I can't mark it right. Okay. So, yes, you can do it either way. I don't care. The only reason I suggest this is because in the real world, this is the way you do it. Okay. Next question, and that is, let me make sure how many we got there. Uh, that's number eight. Number eight. Okay, so number eight, I can take those two off. Okay, this is number 11. Okay, convert the following angle to degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, this is, this is a test question and a standardized test question. So in this case, we take the point 0.8211. The 61 is okay. 61 degrees. And now we're going to go over here, and I'm going to take the point 0.8211. And what am I going to do with it? Or what? Multiply it times 60. Multiply it times 60 and tell me what you get. 49 point what? Two six six. So that forty nine is your what? Your minutes. Now we got this left. So what am I going to multiply point two six six by? Multiply it by sixty, and what do you get? It 
rounds to 16. Now tell me what it is so I can write it down. 15.96. 15.96 seconds. Now I'm not going to put 15.96 seconds. I'm going to round it to 16 seconds. In the real world, you would round it up to 20 seconds because of the auto light or a transit, you're not going to be able to hit 16 seconds. So that would be your answer. Here, you multiply by 60, and you multiply by 60. Whatever the decimal is, you multiply that. I multiplied the 0.82 times 60. I got a whole number. That's your degrees. You multiply the point, what's left over, the 0.266 times 60, and that is your section, which I did round up to 16. Next. And the reason I'm not typing them in is because I'm trying to get as many as I can. I'm trying to get up to 6 point or 9.3. I'm trying to get there as fast as I can. Okay, so that's going to be number 11. Number 23. Find the exact length of the arc intercepted by the given central angle in the figure to the right. Okay, this is just the arc length. Now, this was probably sent before we went over arc length. Okay, so most of you should be saying what? It's pretty what? Simple. So here we go. S is equal to R theta. S is equal to 11 times 5 pi over 4. And that's going to be 55 pi over 4. And 4 will go into 55. 4 will go in there, what, one time and then 14 times? I'm going to say 14. 14 pi. So 14 times 3 is 52. So somebody give me the angle because I, I said roughly about 52 degrees. What is it? 55 pi over 4. What is it? I'm sorry, distance. 52 inches. What did y'all get? 43.8. Oh, I was way off. I stuck. What? 40.8. How far do you want? Just two digits. Uh, what would be 19? 19. That's inches. How did I get 52? 14 times 3. 4 will go into 55 one time. Now I rounded up. I did go up four times. 14 times pi. I thought 14 times 3 was 50. No, it's 42. I'm thinking something else. 42. Okay, my bad. The answer is 43.19 inches. That's the test question. Anything having to do with arc length, you can bet your bottom dollar it's going to be on the test. Now, I haven't went over arc area yet. <clears throat> I'm going to wait and get all these questions. I want to get everybody up to snuff before we move on. So don't fuss at me. Next. And that was number 23. So let me see if 23 is 24. Let me see what it looks like. Okay, same type. Um, wait a minute. This is different. Find the radius of the circle in the figure to the right. I like this one because they make you think. Okay, what's the radius? Well, let's look. S is equal to 4 pi, right? I think that's what they're telling you. S is equal to R theta. S is 4 pi. R is 5 pi over 3. They're wanting theta, right? Radius. Oh, they want R. Okay, well, I'll change it around. Sorry. R times 5 pi over 3. And when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by what? 3 over 5 pi. And the pi's cancel. And you're left with 12 over 5. 
12 over 5 is equal to 2 and 4 tenths. Somebody check. 2.4? Yeah. So 2.4 equals R. That's a good test question. Make sure you mark these, especially with the, the radiuses. I'm sorry, with the circles. Okay, that takes care of 24. 24, delete. 24, delete. 24, delete. 24, delete. 25. I'm going to make it. Believe it or not. Okay, here we go. Find the length to three. I don't care about the significant digits. Just find the dadgum thing. Of the arc intercepted by the central angle of a radius, blah, blah, blah. The length of the intersected arc. So it looks like to me they're giving you, all you have to do is multiply. S is equal to R. And like I said, most of these probably came before we went over it. So S is equal to R times 5 pi over 8. And let's see, that would be 5 pi over 4. Let's see. I'm, going, I'm, not, I'm just going to round here. So I'm going to do that in blue because I'm rounding. Okay, 2 will go into 8 4 times, 2 will go into 10 5 times. That would be 25 pi over 4, which is 75 over 4, which is equal to 1, 8, point seven five. It's around 18, 19. What is it? I got 20. Okay, 20. So what's the answer? 20 what? Uh, 20.02. 20.02? I don't care. Everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. So, centimeters. 20.028. The reason I do this is just to check to make sure that my answer, especially if I do the math right, to see if my answer, if I came up with 30, then I know something's wrong either with my math or with the math I did on the calculator. Okay. Contrary to popular belief, your calculator does not know everything. Okay. You still have bridges that fall from people, engineers that use the calculator too much. All right. Lee, that was what? 25? How did we go to 3 again? Why didn't we go That's 9.3. Oh, 9.3. What was the one we just did? 9.2? Yeah. Oh, we were still on 9.1. That was the last one. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, 9.3. This is number 6. And I really don't know what 9.3 is. Okay, this is special angles, right? Okay, special angles. And we haven't covered this, so I want to go into this. And we'll stop there, go to the whiteboard, and we're going to talk about... We can't say Oscar had a hunk of apple because that's too redneck, so we got to use Sakatoa. Anyway, all angles are going to follow sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Now, do y'all remember in algebra? When you were supposed to, I saw that yawn, Oconee. Okay, do you remember in, in algebra when you had the shortcuts and you had the reverse FOIL and people didn't want to learn the five shortcuts? They just wanted to learn FOIL and they wondered why they couldn't get the, get, get the time down. And your teacher said, you better learn the shortcuts because they're going to follow you all the way to differential equations. Okay, remember somebody saying that? Especially me if I taught you. Okay? If you're going to be in calculus all the way through Diffie Q, statics, dynamics, thermodynamics, if you're going to go through all of those, you're never going to get away from these. So if you want to go ahead and get you an underwater firefighting degree, you better go ahead and drop. These are going to follow you throughout your engineering slash science slash whatever major you're in that pertains to math and science. All right. Oscar had 
a pump of apple. Now, I know this is not for the sophisticated. Okay, for the sophisticated, it's Sakatola. Sa, S O H C A H Toa, T O A. Okay? Oscar had a hunk of apple. Now, everybody, if you have these three, then you have all six. So I want everybody to focus on these, these three. Now, I'm talking to the person that's never had trick before. Now, the other thing you have to remember, and these are Hubert's two basic rules. Oscar had a hunk of apple. And remember that all right triangles, you got a little man down here on theta. Okay? Theta is always your angle. You could have that up here. You could have it down here. But wherever your little man is, is wherever this little symbol is. And he always has one foot on the adjacent, and he always has one foot on the hypotenuse. That, to me, is one of the secrets of trig, if you've never seen trig before. Because if I ask you to put theta up here, it turns everything around. And as long as you keep the little man on theta, you'll always have one foot on the hypotenuse and one foot on the adjacent. If you have theta down here, what's across from theta? The opposite. Adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay? Now, in some instances, this is going to be called y, this is going to be called x, and this is going to be called r for the resultant vector. Now we're getting into a little bit of physics. Okay? It don't matter what you call it. It's the same thing. They spend a whole section in this book doing X, Y, and R when all you're doing is O, A, and H. It's the same thing. I don't know why they do that, but they do. So if I have a, then there's three special angles. There is the 45 degree, I meant the 30 degree angle. There is the 45 degree angle and the 60 degree angle. Now I'm kind of scrunching in a little bit at the same time, but uh, 90, I'd say 80% of you have had trick before, so this is a review. Um, and make sure you write these things down because it's very important. This is your first thing that's very important. The little man is the second thing. Now you will see that and later when I flip and I put the little man up there. And if I put theta up here, you've got a different animal. And you've got to remember that the opposite is going to be over here. And the adjacent is going to be here. And the hypotenuse is going to be here. And that's what, that's what a lot of students don't understand, especially if they've never seen trick before. So that's the second most important thing. And the third most important thing is the special angles. What will that lead to? That will lead to the fourth most important thing, which is called what? Okay. We've already filled out 50% of the unit circle. Now we're going to fill out the other 50%, which is your cosine and your sine, which I already started doing that with you the other day with the with the zero, the, the pi over two, pi, three pi over two. I did it with the, the 90 degree angles. But the 30 degree angle is going to be, remember, this one is, and I still get confused to this day. It's one square root of three, two, right? Or one, three, square root of two. I can't remember. One, square root of three. I know this one is one, one, square root of two. I never had a problem with that one. And this one is one, square root of two, I think, or three, square root of three. Somebody help me out. It's one, and then one times the square root of three, and then two x. No, that's not right. There's not a 2x in it. There's not an x in it. One, I mean, 2 times 1. 
two, one, two, square root of three. So this is two and this is square root of three, I think. Somebody check me. And this is, the one's going to be on the bottom, square root of three and two. Let me check. One squared plus this squared is three. Yeah, that's right. I always get that. Ever since I was a student, I always got the three and the square root of two. I always got that mixed up. All right. So now I'm not going to do the unit circle. I'm not going to do that yet. What I want you to do is I want you to write down, and I'm just going to, I'm going to make all this small. And again, 90% of you probably know this, and that's fine. Now, I'm going to start with the the uh, the uh, 30 degree angle, which is square root of three point two. If I ask you for the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Sine, Oscar hat. Well, this is your opposite. This is your adjacent because your man's down here. And this is the hypotenuse. So, Oscar hat is one over what? Two. So therefore, the reciprocal of sine is the cosecant. So that's going to be two over what? One. The cosine is what? A hump. Square root of three over what? Two. So therefore, the secant is two over the square root of three. Now, I'm going to put square root of 3 in red because what do we not want in the denominator? Right. We don't want a radical, so we're going to have to address that later. Next, tangent. What is the tangent? Of apple. Of apple. 1 over the square root of 3, and we don't like that. So we've got 2 that we've got to address as far as the radical goes, and what's the reciprocal of 1 over the square root of 3? So you just done the special angles, you just done the 6 trigonometric function for the special angle 30 degrees. Now you can fill out the unit circle at 30 degrees. Because one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. Now we're going to get to that in just a second. All right. Now I want you to do 45. Oh, I forgot. Multiply by, I'm going to take my blue marker. Multiply, rationalize the denominator. Square root of 3 over square root of 3. That's going to be square root of 3 over what? Multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. That's going to be 2 square root of 3 over 3. So there's your six trigonometric functions. Now, I'm going to show you something right quick before we do the 45. Go to your unit circle. Now there's your 30 degrees. There's your 30 degrees. There's your 30 degrees. And there's your 30 degrees. Now, the cosine comes first. What's the cosine? Square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Now, look over here. What is your x? If I dropped a line right here, what would my x be? Positive or negative? Negative. What would my y be? Positive. So now, this cosine and cosine is going to be reflective of that negative sign. And what? That positive sign. Because what is the hypotenuse? It's always what? Positive, because you square it. Okay? So the negative is going to have a lot to do with this cosine and this. Now it's going to be square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. But what is this negative going to do with these things right here, the sine and the cosine? 
Well, remember this. I'm going to take my magenta, and this is number five, or number four, and the unit circle is number five. All students take calculus. All students take calculus. Does anybody know what that means? Us. What was that? I heard last. Uh, what? <laughs> anybody know what all students take calculus mean? Uh, do with what's positive in each quadrant. Exactly. What's positive in each quadrant. So all are positive. In this quadrant. See? All of these are positive. Everybody knows that? So all of your special angles are going to be positive. All your sine and cosines are going to be positive. Sorry. Cosine slash sines are going to be positive in the first quadrant. Think about marketing business. Which quadrant is going to be positive? The first quadrant. That's why you stay in, you know. Okay, shut up. All right. Students. What starts with an S? Sine, and what's the reciprocal of the sine? So the sine and the cosecant are positive. So that means everything else is what? So that means that this cosine is what? Negative. Let's go down here. What starts with a T? Tangent and what? Cotangent. So the tangent and the cotangent are positive, so that means everything else is what? Negative. What starts with a C? Uh, secant are positive. Cosine and are positive. So now let's do this one. You know that it's going to be, and somebody remind me, what's uh, 180? 210? Is that 210 down here? 210, well, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, and of course, you know, and we're going to add the other stuff to it. I'm trying to trying to show you something, all right? Now, what's, what, well, that's the sine and the cosine, so that means both of these are what? Negative, because the tangent and the cotangent are only what? So that one's going to be negative, and that one's going to be negative. All right, over here, what is 360 minus 30? 330. And it's going to have the same, but what's going to be the cosine is going to be positive, but the sine is going to be what? The cosine is going to be positive, but what's the sine going to be? Negative. Okay, so now do 45. What time is it? Maybe it's 1221. Time y'all get out? 35. 35, I thought so. Okay, so let's do the 45. So 1, 1, square root of 2. I want y'all to do all four. And no, I don't show you the chart, and no, I don't tell you to memorize the chart. I make you learn the chart. So remember, your man is where the 45 degrees is. So that means put it on the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So that means that the other one over there is the opposite. I need to bring two of these on Tuesday and Thursday. That'd be what, eight ounces? Yeah, it's 20. So that's eight ounces, right? Five ounces, eight ounces, what, you stop. Thoughts. Okay, let's see. Settle down, Pendleton. Pendleton, do y'all ever ask any questions in class? Like sending homework questions? 
No, I'm talking about your other classes. Oh, uh, mm. not really. How do y'all expect to learn anything? Okay. I swear, when they walk into that room in Anderson Hall, it saps the personality out. I don't know what. I don't know what it does. Lucas, I'm sorry. I saw. I mean, I, I forgot all about. I was I meaning to do that. And I got to talking and I forgot. I learned how to invite myself. And, I mean, bring him in. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna ask y'all a question.